everyone. I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Ice tastes better to me than anything. Okay guys, today we are going to be starting Acts chapter 18. We'll be reading verses 1 through 22. You're going to see Paul and Silas in Corinth, and now they actually have Timothy with them as well. We'll be reading Psalm 145 and Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. One proverb. Let's see here. So we'll be talking about in Corinth. So uh, Paul, Silas, and Timothy will be there with the Corinthians. And they'll also be meeting Priscilla, Aquila, and Apollos. Priscilla and Aquila become very close to Paul and the disciples. They are a husband and wife. And they become very close. So you're going to see what uh, Claudius did in Rome about the Jews which I do not understand why people have always treated Jews the way they have throughout history. Hitler, so on and so on, makes no sense to me. No sense whatsoever. I don't understand it. People can reason all they want to, but it's not right, it's evil. How would they like it if the Jews had done that to them instead? Awful. Okay, but let's go ahead and get started in Corinth. And that's why they are called the Corinthians there, because they're in Corinth, okay? After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. He ordered all Jews to leave. And if they hadn't, they probably would have been arrested and killed, enslaved, who knows what. Why did he want all of them to leave Rome? It's a big place. Why did he want the, the Jews to leave Rome? We don't know. But I'm sure he had a reason. And now you're going to see what Paul's profession was. He also had a job, you know, to work and make money. Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker, yes, Paul was a tent maker, as they were, which Priscilla and Aquila were, he went to see them. He stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. And you know how it is, just like with others, some believe, some did not. The Jews were having a hard time. Uh, Paul was having a hard time trying to get them to listen and believe. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. They would not listen to him. People in your hometown are sometimes the worst critics, you know. They think, oh, they're nobody special. I've known them so-and-so, and their parents are so-and-so who've done this bad thing and that bad thing. There's nothing special about them. It's like Jesus said, remember? A prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown. So true. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. 
the Lord said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year, for a whole year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man, they charged, is persuading the people to worship God in many ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, If you Jews are making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I would not be judge of such things. So he drove them off. Sounds a little familiar, right? With Herod, Pontius Pilate, sending Jesus back and forth, not wanting to do anything. Neither one of them wanted to be the ones to do it. Then the crowd there turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue leader, and beat him in front of the proconsul. And Gallio showed no concern whatsoever. But sat there and watched he get here. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Censorate because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they attacked him to spend more, sorry, when they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail for Ephesus, from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went back down to Anoch. And that is where we're going to stop with Acts today. Okay, so now we are going to Psalm 145, which has 21 verses. And it is, let's see here, a psalm of praise of David. So it's a happier psalm of David. He's praising the Lord of this psalm, not crying out for help or anything, like he was in the last one we read when Absalom, his son, was after him to kill him. Yes, his own son. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. 
the Lord is trustworthy in all He promises and faithful in all He does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all His ways and faithful in all He does. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love Him, but the wicked He will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise His holy name forever and ever. All right, guys, and that was Psalm 145, a psalm of praise of David. Now, ending today's Bible reading is one Proverbs, Proverbs 18, verse 1. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends, and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. So true. Always just looking to start a fight with someone, to get something going, to meet their selfish end, to get what they want, whether it be good or bad, and whether they have to do a good thing to get it or most likely a bad thing to get it. They sit back and smile because they know they're getting their way. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends, and against all sound judgment, starts quarrels. They can break up a family or anything, and they could care less, as long as they get in their way and get what they want. That's the truth. All right, guys. That was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. Please keep everyone in our prayer list for your in your prayers. Please pray for uh, my Aunt Laura Parker. She's been having a lot of back trouble and stuff. She's been going to the chiropractor a lot. So she, she's in a lot of pain right now. Please pray for Layla and her son Emil. Please pray for Ramona Henry. Please pray for Abby Myers and Jimmy Myers. Please pray that God brings them back together and things get back to the way they used to be. And please um, keep Sherman your prayers as well. And Cindy Welsh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.